This is a sonnet called The Hills. Seven by seven our loving arms embrace, holding up the lights at Columbus, draping with the beats, our city by the bay reflecting nothing to waste, with Grant and Pacific raising red lanterns amid the Cantonese, Grace Lick's white rabbit hops near Ashbury's summer flower, nibbling at hope with milk, standing courageously at Castro, yelling to Twin Peaks, the ever-reaching Sutro Tower, chanting melodies down to Graham at the Golden Gate Polos, to the on-Broadway, the Mabuhe Gardens, and the Dead Kennedys, slam dancing near Fillmore's Grateful Dead buried at Gary, with drifting cherry blossoms near Webster. Hello, it's February. Mewing cows at Geneva and balloon drops from the holding company. Starkly, Petrero's Ward 86. Sadly, God picked all his flowers. Moscone gunned down at Polk. Bloody memories forever. Um, so uh, last year, uh, I was a part of an organization coordinating entry program here in San Francisco. And uh, I outreached Te Youth, foster care youth, aging out of the system. And in their, um, in their vulnerability to share with me, they inspired uh, me to write this about my experiences. This is called Mother in Pieces. And it's inspired by Rumi's poem, Not Here, which begins, there's courage involved if you want to become truth. It's called Mother in Pieces. Oh mother, how you repeat your words, they cycle like spokes on a bicycle, and around they come from my left to my right. They stall at my ears like a gnat. I swat them away, and I slowly glance up. They are just words, just lovely, out-of-order words. I don't even try to rearrange or put them in semblance. Like the sun and the moon and the morning breeze through the Monterey Pines, lifting a little sap, carrying a few seeds, I gently cross my legs, place my bent elbow on my thigh, my thumb under my chin, my index finger near my temple. I gently rub it. I look out through your second story open window. The sunlight shifts. A shadow stains the white picket fence below. You pause, and I no longer believe what I think. One, those late August afternoons in 1969, Philip and I pedaling our three-wheeled Batmobiles up the newly asphalted street, the smell of tar following us into the cul-de-sac, glee upon our light sunburned faces, the TV theme song snarling from our lips. Na 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 Batman. Your voice echoes from the front door like an unwanted commercial break. Kids, goddammit, time for dinner. Two, a mini soldier dwarfed with fear, my first day of school, starched baby blue button down shirt, greased hair parted on the left, that damn cowlick. My Jimco purchased Mickey Mouse lunchbox. I cried for hours for you to purchase, now gripped tight in my right hand. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich on wheat enclosed. Those moments at Safeway where you refused to let us eat white bread. My smile exposing a missing front tooth, violently knocked out the night before. Three, standing in front of your friends an impromptu gathering. You and dad had returned from the Caribbean, everyone warm-faced and jubilant from ice-cold beer and sweet wine. You confront me about the 16-year-old babysitter and what I had done with him, my little soft, unsullied body, numb. I wanted to disappear, to fade into the avocado green shag carpet. I looked over my left shoulder, tears staining my eight-year-old face as he is escorted out the front door, becoming a tabooed memory, the ultimate shame blackening my soul. Four, 
That morning I woke, still holding you in my arms. I, the child, you, the parent, your garment stained with urine, your statement in a Mad Dog, 20, Mad Dog 2020 blackout, claiming you're Benjamin Franklin and you've just discovered electricity. I was just thankful you hadn't found the car keys. Five, three minutes into the B-52's planet Claire, loudly ensnaring my college graduation party, you and I sit quietly in the darkened family room, smoking a loosely rolled joint, everyone witnessing you were at times a very cool parent, especially when moods could be altered. Six, Thanksgiving Day, 1983, I had baked Jiffy Corn muffins with all my leftover indica shake. Dad's girlfriend, Shelly, had bought sweet butter, and we ate some of the oddly colored goods before dinner. Accidentally, the bird slid onto the dining room floor, and we all laughed until we cried, eating in merriment with no two-second rule in place. I know you loved him more than you hated him, but you only ever shared the hate with us. Seven, on your knees in front of my bright yellow runabout pinto, as I attempted to pack the rest of my things, you begging me not to move and leave you alone, even though both my siblings still remained, and you were shacked up with another man. I think he was a golfer, a drinker. He wore brown polyester. I listened that day and relented, but left you the following spring after you called me faggot, after we disagreed about who I could bring home and when. Eight. Last year, clearing out the family home of all possessions, you had refused to come home from the hospital. You never wanted to return. So many memories, so much pain, standing in each room and remembering, walking through all the broken pieces, mother. Nine, now leaning back, my hands on each thigh, I look over and you ask me if I'm all right. It's unfamiliar and awkward. Tea, how about some tea? I stand and walk towards the open window and I close it tight. Sure. So we just have a short one here and um, <clears throat> gentrification. So this is called Resentment of Prose Explodes. Resentment of prose explodes and down the round the corner is 17th Street, avocado toast, and $8 lattes. Where the boys in the 80s weren't the same anymore with a carefree blue pill. And who knew I'd live to be 54 in a studio apartment near Dolores Park because I never smoked crystal meth yet. And I never zero converted yet. And I still don't have a plan but a languishing condom in my back pocket where my comb used to be because follically challenged I've become. And I visit my mom in assisted living every one, no two, or three weeks. And she asks me if I've lost weight. And I smile instead of a turning a, a table over because a lot of my friends are dead and had been dying or wasted away or moved away or relapsed into another world where having wine at dinner became an option and white knuckling it upon waking and eyeing five o'clock PM too often just past lunch. And the fruit shelf has been overrun by cisgender girls and their gender conforming boyfriends who loudly proclaim their love of diversity through their white spaces, Sephora purchases and littered beer bottles, and gentrification invades from all sides with my shoulder blades stiff and my fists tight clenching my teeth, and Byright hits the square and emails us our receipts straight out of the neighborhood. <laughs> 